Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Node Summit 2017 in downtown San Francisco, Mission Bay Conference Center. About 800 people talking about Node, Node.js, uh, the, the crazy uh, growth in this application development platform. And we're excited to have our next guest to talk about security, which I don't think we've talked about yet. So he's Guy Poja Pojarni, I'm sorry, Pojarni. Yeah, Pojarni, correct. Welcome, he's the CEO of Sneak. Not spelled like sneak, uh, you'll see it on the lower third. <laughs> it's amazing how often we get that question well, about I know, how do you pronounce sneak. Obviously people uh, that have never had to start up and try to go through a URL search just in, don't in, know indeed, what it's all about. Indeed, and your sort of Google dominance. <laughs> exactly. It's short for so now you know, so now you know. Oh, so now you know, okay, perfect, <laughs> super. So first off, welcome, great Thank to see you. Thank you, thanks for having me. So uh, you said it's your second year at the conference, why don't you just kind of share your general impressions of what's going on here? Sure, well I think Node Summit is, is an awesome conference, and I think this this year's event is, is bigger, better organized, uh, I don't know if it's bigger people-wise, but it definitely feels that way. Sort of feels more uh, more structured. Right. Um, it's nice to see in the audience as well. Just an increased amount of larger organizations that are around and talking about their challenges. And a little bit, although we're sort of earlier in the conference, but a little bit of um, more experienced conversations. So conversations about, hey, we've used Node and we've encountered these issues, versus you know we're about to use it, we're thinking of using it. So right, right. definitely can see the enterprise adoption kind of growing up. That's my primary kind of impression so far. Yeah, and it's interesting because you're a startup, but you know Microsoft is here, Google's here, Intel is here, IBM yeah. is here. So a lot of the big players who, who've, who've demonstrated in other open source communities that they have completely embraced yeah. open source as a, as a I, method and a way to get close to the Actually, more than I think the software is getting close to the development community. Yeah, agreed. And I think uh, I think another uh, adjacent trend that's happening is serverless, and uh, serverless has grown ridiculously, like by by massive amounts in right. this last while. And Node.js is sort of the de facto uh, default language for uh, for serverless. Uh, Lambda started with it, and AWS and many of the other platforms only support it. So I think that contribution uh, also brings the giants a little bit more in here, right? Right. Uh, the cloud giants, uh, but also. I I think again, just sort of boosts the Node.js as, as though the Node.js ecosystem needed a boost. Uh, you know, <laughs> they get yet another amplifier, right, right. Um, uh, to sort of raise enterprise awareness and general usage. So. Okay, so what's Sneak all about? Give us the uh, uh, for people that aren't familiar with the company. Cool. So Sneak deals with uh, open source security and specifically in Node.js, the world of NPM. So NPM is amazing and it allows us to build on the shoulders of giants and you know all the others in the community. Uh, but there are some inherent security risks with. Uh, just pulling code off the internet and running it in your application. Right, and, right. Uh, what we do at Sneak is we help you find known security flaws, known vulnerabilities in NPM packages and do that in a, in a natural fashion as part of your continuous development process and then fix those efficiently and monitor for them over time. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically what So that's what your we focus do. is really keeping track of all these other packages that people are using for their development. Yeah, precisely. And we're, you know, we're sort of helping you just use open source code and stay secure. Right. And we're, Node is kind of our flagship and is where we started and built, and now we sort of support a bunch of right. other ecosystems it's as well. It's interesting, Monica from Intel said that in some of their work, they found that on some of these applications, the, the actual developer's only contributing like 2% of the code because they're pulling in all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, precisely. I have this example I use in a bunch of my talks that shows a serverless uh, example that has 19 lines of code copies some file from uh, uh, a URL and puts it on S3. It has 19 lines of code, which is awesome. It uses two packages, which in turn use 19 packages, which bring in 190,000 lines of code. Uh, so, wow. you know, that's so a, what is a that massive, step that's 19 again? to 190,000. So it starts with two? 19 li lines of code. 19 lines of code. Two NPM packages. They use 19 packages in because every package uses other packages as well. And Combined, those 19 packages bring in 190,000 lines of code. Wow, that and is amazing. That's an extreme example, but you see this that that's pattern. You see this again and again that the majority of your code in your applications, especially in Node, uh, is not first party, it's third party code. Right. Uh, and that means most of your security risk, most of your vulnerabilities, they come from there. So there's a lot of challenges around managing dependencies. You know, it's called dependency right. hell for right. a reason. Right. Uh, but um, specifically security is uh, uh, still not, not sufficiently taken care of, it's still overlooked. And we need to make sure that it's not just addressed by security people, but it's addressed as part of the development process right. uh, by developers. So how do you keep up both with the number uh, as, the, as the proliferation grows as well as the 
the rever uh, revisions and versions inside of any particular package, right? You're, you're, yeah. you're kind of chasing a multi-headed beast there. So it's definitely tough. Uh, so you know, first of all, the, the short answer is automation. I mean, any, any scale solution has to start with automation. Right. I've got a security research team in Israel that uh, has a vulnerability pipeline that feeds in from activity in the open source world. You know, some developer opens an issue in GitHub that says SQL injection in some package and that disappears into the ether. So we try to surface those, get it to our security analysts, determine if it's a real vulnerability, curate it in our database, and then you know, just sort of build that database, we do our own research, but you know, a lot of it is around tapping into community. And then subsequently when you consume this, if you want to be able to, um, to apply security correctly as you develop your applications, Node.js or otherwise, it has to come to you, it has, the security tool has to be a seamless integration with how you currently work. Right, if right. you impose another step, another two steps, another three steps on our developers, they're just not going to use it. Right. So that's a lot of our emphasis is scale on the consumption and the tracking of the database and simplicity and ease of use on the uh, on the developer and the user side. And then do you help with just like flagging, you know, flagging it's a problem, or is there an alternative? I mean, I would imagine with these, all these interdependencies, yeah. you find one, you know, rotten apple kind of have a huge impact. You yeah, know, it's a huge scale of impact, right? Uh, absolutely. Multiplier. So we, we do, you know, f uh, really, you know, what our moniker is that we don't find vulnerabilities, we fix them. And you know, our, our goal is to fix vulnerabilities. Okay. So we actually, first of all, in the flow, we have single click, open a fix PR. We figure out what changes you need to do, what upgrades you need to make to make the vulnerability go away. Literally, click a button to fix it. You know, we don't want that for everything. Right, um, right, right. And then what we also do is we build patches. Um, sort of a little known fact is in, in the world of operating system, Red Hat and Canonical, um, they build a lot of uh, fixes, or they backport a lot of open source fixes, uh, and they put them into their repositories, so you can just say yum update or, or up get upgrade and just get those fixes. You don't even know which vulnerabilities you're fixing, you're right. just getting the fixes. Right. So we build patches for NPM packages as well okay. to allow you to patch vulnerabilities you cannot upgrade away. So okay. a lot of it is around fix, make fix easy. Right, and then the other part, as you said, right, is baking security in the development all the way through, which Correct. we hear over and over and over, right? The, yeah, the build it in, mode don't bolt it in. Method bolt it doesn't on. work anymore. You've got to have it throughout the application. So, oh, so you said you're speaking on a panel tomorrow, um, and I wonder if you can just highlight some of the, the topics for tomorrow for the folks that aren't going to be here and, and, and see the panel. You know, when you look at serverless security, say that three times fast, <laughs> um, you know, what are some of the real special challenges that people need to be thinking about? Sure, so you know, I actually have two talks tomorrow. So one is a, is a panel on Node.js security as a whole, and that's, okay. um, that's sort of a broader panel. We have a few other colleagues in there, and you know, we talk about the evolution of Node.js security. That includes the platform itself, which is increasingly well handled by the foundation. Uh, definitely some improvements there uh, over the years. And some of it is around best practices, like the ones that we've just discussed, uh, which is understanding known pitfalls and Node.js uh, sort of security mistakes that you might do, uh, as well as handling the NPM ecosystem. The other talk that I have later in the day is around serverless security. Serverless security is interesting because you know, a lot of the promise of serverless is function as a service is uh, that a, a lot of the concerns, a lot of the earlier or lower levels get abstracted away from you. You don't need right. to manage servers. You don't need to manage operating systems. Um, and with those, a lot of security concerns go away which in turn focuses the attackers and should focus you on the application. You know, as you know, attackers are not just going to give up because they can you know, hack the operating system right, that right. the pros are managing, uh, so they would look at the next low-hanging fruit and that would be the application. So platform as a service and function as a service really um, increase the, uh, the importance of dealing with application security as a whole well. Um, so my talk is a lot about that, uh, but also deals with um, uh, other sort of security concerns that you might, you know, of course, any new methodology introduces its own concerns. So, right. talk a little bit about how to uh, how to address those. Serverless, like Node.js, is an opportunity to build security into the culture and into our methodologies from the early days. So, trying to help us get that right. All right. So, as you look forward in the next twelve months, I won't say more than twelve months, six months, nine months, yeah. twelve months. What are some of your priorities at, at Sneak? What are you working on? If, if we, you know, get together a year from now, you know, what will we be talking about? Um, I think, so two primary ones. One is continuing the emphasis on fix, making, um, making fixing trivial in the Node.js environments as well as others. Um, I think we've done well there, but there's more work to be done and needs to be as seamless as possible. 
The other aspect is indeed in this sort of PaaS and FaaS world and sort of platform and function as a service, uh, where increasingly there's this awareness as we work with different platforms to the blind spot that they have to uh, open source libraries. You know, they mm. fix your Nginx vulnerabilities, but not your Express vulnerabilities. Um, you know, I sometimes refer to NPM packages or open source packages as sprinkles of infrastructure that are just scattered through your application. <laughs> um, and uh, today, all of these cloud platforms are blind to it, so I expect us at Sneak to be uh, uh, helping PaaS and FaaS users uh, deal with that security concerns efficiently. All right, well I look forward to the conversation. Thanks, All right, too. thanks for stopping by. Thank you. He's Guy Pojarni, he is from Sneak, the CEO of Sneak. I'm Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE.